Thank you for coming today, and thank you to the Portland Cement Association for hosting us. Uh, obviously, thank you to the Art Institute uh, for the upcoming show on Bertrand, and to Steve for his uh, tireless efforts. I'd like to ask the question, uh, why are we here? Why come look at 50-year-old buildings? Given all the things happening in the world around us, why think about a few people putting the spade in the ground 50 years ago? And my father is a big fan of getting rid of all excess. Perhaps we come here to learn. What was there here? Was there something here with its newness, its inventiveness, its collaborations, and its expertise? Was there something there that we can use today? Fifty years ago, a group of very creative people came together to try some very unusual ideas and solve some very hard problems. They were idealistic. They were practical. They were the most advanced engineers, builders, designers, and developers of their time. They were also the most unusual team ever assembled to build one of the most daring projects ever imagined. How could it have worked? Look around, it did, but how? Marina City was not a developer's scheme to make money, although it made money. It was not simply an architect's vision of what should be, although it had a lot of that too. It was not just a place to rent, although it is that too, and to get today healthier than it was during its dark years. It is all of these and yet something more. When built, it was an inspiration, and it remains one today. <coughs> It was then, and still is, essentially an optimistic place. So let's try to unravel that story, see what it was. Let's try the quick 15-minute history of this, one of the most complex urban projects ever built. A few key things. It was, in its time, the highest apartment towers, the densest development in the city, the first mixed-use complex in Chicago since Sullivan, and the first to bring housing downtown. It was Chicago's first planned development, number one on city block number one. It was the first to make parking a feature. The first modern high-rise apartments were middle class with big usable balconies. It had the biggest mix of uses with bowling, swimming, shopping, theater, banking, first drive-in in Chicago. Groceries, cleaning, travel, postal, boating, ice skating, furniture, shopping, jewelry, anything missing? TV studios, radio stations, river overlooks, laundry machines with skyline views, roof deck to see the city, all in 1960. Largest all-electric building outside the Pentagon. Rental housing for middle-class folks. A quarter of it was reserved for people who worked here. A place where everyday folks could have fancy architecture. Not shabby. And it was built by the unions. Labor. Chicago labor. It was not built in a normal way. It used construction breakthroughs in many different ways. Special construction sequencing, unique cranes, massive six-foot concrete pours, specially shaped construction. Only now, as we as architects can begin to figure this out. Okay. It had structural cores of, of dramatic size and height, and that was just the towers. The office building, now the Sachs Hotel, had open floor plates, easily convertible, energy recycling, and structurally a very rare example of a true exoskeletal structure, all in concrete and don't forget those magnificent Gothic arches. The theater, now the House of Blues, was made with a unique steel structure, sprayed concrete unlike any other in the world. The list can go on and on depending on what you're interested in and how far you want to go. Different people find different things in Marina City. It's an architectural candy store, something for everyone. I'd like to leave you with a few general ideas that might capture much of what it has to offer, one man's view as it were, so here they are. First, it was designed as a whole. Marina City is an entire complex. It is more than just two towers. It may look like pieces come as pieces, but that's just how it was done. The idea was parts that work together. A good plaza is just as important as tall towers. Second, it's lean, mean, and sweet. Everything here has a purpose. There's no fat, no extra, no glitz without utility. It's a working man's tool, purposeful and elegant. Third, it's popular and progressive. Marina City was designed around individuals. The magic here is in how they lived and worked together. Rents were for the middle class, and this captured the imagination of the city, and it is still admired around the world. Marina City has been a good citizen in our city. Could it please finally be landmarked? <laughs> Marina City was about energy and how to preserve it. It was one of ComEd's first all-electric buildings, and the idea was simple, give people choices. Each apartment controlled their own energy, their own heating, cooling, and hot water. They had their own meters. If not home, turn it down. You don't pay for someone else, just yourself. And finally, concrete everywhere. 
Okay? It is an extraordinary example of how a material can be used. Concrete is plastic, it can do so many things. And here it is shaped, tweaked, hidden, exposed, dressed, and made simple. You name it, it's here somewhere. This project is a prototype for innovation and collaboration between design and construction. It's a rare and fruitful collaboration between ideas and technology. And finally, it was people working together. It was not just an idea from the sky. Sure, it was driven by an architect and the people in his firm, but it also shows what people can do when they put their heads together and when they work together. It took the engineering genius of Ralph Peck, Frank Kornacker, and Severu to make this happen. They needed a client with the courage to try, thanks to Bill McFetridge and Chuck Swibel. They needed a good contractor with the guts to tackle this, thanks to McHugh. And they needed leaders willing to participate in this experiment, and that is what it was. And thanks to Mayor Daly, who supported the project. Marine City was cross-disciplinary before we knew the term, using the newest ideas from engineering, construction, social planning, entertainment, and architecture to weave them into a set of answers that worked. Buildings don't often celebrate birthdays, and it's rare yet that anyone notices. Yet for 50 years, Marina City's been an icon of our city, and that says something special about it. Marina City is Chicago's example of creative answers made useful, vision made practical. And in the end, that's the lesson for today, that ideas can be useful, new problems need new answers, and that practical and vision can work together. It's taken us a long time to understand this, and hopefully we get it now, and we'll come away from today looking forward to solve today's problems using ideas and methods from the past as well as from yet to come. Thank you for coming today, and thanks to them for making it happen.